The story begins with a lonely woman named Anna having a glass of wine before going to bed. However, when she looks up, she witnesses someone strangling her roommate to death. At first she thinks she is hallucinating. But upon closer examination, it is confirmed that the neighbor is indeed being killed. Throwing herself into the fight, Anna grabs her phone and reports it to the police. She then decides to run outside. Unfortunately, it is raining, and as she makes her way, her legs grow weaker and weaker and Anna falls strangely to the ground. When she closes her eyes the scene returns to the past, where Anna once had a happy family. She had a good husband and a loving daughter. One day the school gives them an assignment that requires parents to bring their children to their workplace to experience the work environment. So her husband Douglas takes their daughter Elizabeth with him to work before he leaves. It's raining so Anna pulls out an umbrella for Elizabeth, but she had no idea it would be their last meeting. Douglas is a forensic psychiatrist specializing in serial killers for the FBI. He takes Elizabeth with him to the prison, to a room where he needs to evaluate a serial killer who has killed and eaten 30 people. Maybe Elizabeth should have gone to work with her mother, the boy, Dougie. Just before the evaluation begins, the warden asks Douglas to leave the room on urgent business. The warden then closes the door and accidentally locks the room. But Douglas has forgotten that there is a serial killer named Slaughter Mike in the same room as his daughter. Unfortunately, Mike takes full advantage of the opportunity and makes little Elizabeth his first victim. Their daughter's murder ruined Anna's relationship with her husband, and they divorced as a result. Several years have passed, but Anna is still shaken by what happened. And what's worse, she has developed a fear of rain, since it rained that fateful day. To cope with the loss of her daughter and the breakdown of her marriage, Anna returned to drinking wine regularly. Grief took its toll on Anna's sanity. Sometimes she claimed to hear noises around the house and see her dead daughter Elizabeth. This has made her even more of an outcast in the neighborhood. The only guy she trusts is a local handyman who specializes in fixing broken mailboxes. It's by no means a real job. Anna hasn't dated in a long time. But one day, when a handsome man named Neil Coleman moves into the house across the street, she instantly falls in love with him. Neil is a widower and has a nine-year-old daughter named Emma. This is music to Anna's ears and to get closer to Neil, she befriends his young daughter. But to her horror, she soon discovers that Neil has a beautiful friend, a flight attendant named Lisa. Anna feels uncomfortable after flirting with Neil and decides to keep her distance for now. However, she continues to spy on Neil and his family. One night while she is drinking wine, she witnesses Lisa's murder. Anna cannot save Lisa because she faints on the road for fear of the rain. Surprisingly, a mysterious man watches everything unfold and picks her up. Later, Anna wakes up on her couch, the drenched police, whom Anna had called earlier, also stay and search Neil's house. However, they find no bodies. And Neil tells them that Lisa is a flight attendant and is now at work on a plane to Seattle. The police then question Anna, and when they notice a bottle of wine and some medicine on her desk, they suspect she's just hallucinating and leave. However, Anna is sure she is not hallucinating, so the next morning she talks to Neil, but just like the others, Neil claims that Lisa is still alive. He even shows several text messages he exchanged with Lisa this morning. Despite the evidence, Anna is still far from convinced. After Neil and his daughter Emma leave for the supermarket she breaks into their house to look for more evidence. By the window, she finds Lisa's earrings, which she keeps to herself. But before she can find anything more concrete, Neil and Emma return home and catch her red-handed. The father-daughter duo then berate her for overstepping their boundaries before she is kicked out of the house. Distraught with embarrassment, Anna heads to her friend Sloane and explains the ordeal to her. She tries to ask for help in investigating the crime scene, but to her horror Sloane also believes that she has been hallucinating. Now because of all the people giving her the same reason combined with the fact that she usually sees her dead daughter. Anna becomes convinced that she may indeed have been hallucinating. Consequently, she decides to stop her investigation and visit the support group she enrolled in after her daughter's death. After the meeting, Anna makes plans to leave town to clear her thoughts. But at the airport, as she waits to buy a ticket, she learns that there have been no flights to Seattle during that week. This leads Anna to wonder, since Neil claimed that Lisa had left for Seattle the day before. She also learns that Lisa is currently on an extended vacation. With this information, Anna begins to suspect that Neil killed his friend, so she visits the local police station and talks to a detective named Len. She pulls out Lisa's earrings and asks the policeman to investigate the case but Lane mentions that there is not enough evidence. In fact, the only evidence is awe. Anna leaves the police station lost, and when she gets to her car, she finds warnings. Pull over, or are you next? Despite this, she continues her investigation. When Neil's daughter Elizabeth comes to sell some cookies, she wins her trust by giving her a large sum of money. 
Then she asks the little girl if she heard anything last night, right before the police arrive? Elizabeth says almost nothing, but tells her that her daddy and Lisa fought all the time, and that's why Neil sent her to watch TV. This makes Anna even more suspicious of Neil. The next morning, she searches for Neil on the internet. To her shock, she learns that Neil was the prime suspect in his late wife's death, but was released for lack of evidence. Some claim that he threw his wife into the water and watched her drown. Anna, who has a habit of thinking too much, begins to imagine the whole incident. Neil drove his wife not far from the docks and began to behave rudely to her, for no reason at all. Then, while their daughter was watching this, he threw her into the water and enjoyed it while she frightened her last breath away. Though all of this is only in her imagination, Anna feels that her intuition is not wrong. She also learns that a few days after Neil's wife's murder, Emma's teacher died an unnatural death. It turns out that Emma, her classmates were on a school field trip when the teacher mysteriously fell off the lighthouse. Oddly enough, in the group photo, Neil is the only parent present. Again, Anna imagines what might have happened. Then she assumes that Neil had a relationship with the teacher at the lighthouse. He made several attempts at coitus, but the teacher rejected them all. So in a fit of rage, he pushed her down so that she crashed to her death. Anna becomes increasingly convinced that Neil is behind all these deaths, so she intensifies her investigation. That night she notices Neil dragging a large gym bag to his car and becomes convinced that he is disposing of Lisa's body, so she quickly intimidates her car and begins to follow him secretly. Soon they pull up to this alley, where Neil stops his car, takes out the gym bag, and places it next to the dumpster. Before Anna can do anything about it, however, Neil notices her and the two of them get into an argument. Anna accuses him of being a murderer, while Neil is upset that he is constantly being spied on. Despite this, Anna is adamant about finding out the truth so she opens the gym bag. She does find a man, but not a real one, just a puppet. Then it turns out that to cope with his wife's death, Neil has acquired a hobby and has become a womb broadcaster, with the serial killer visiting local bars exactly every weekend to perform and delight others just as he did today. Hearing all this, Anna is once again embarrassed and apologizes before she leaves, seeing how obsessed she has been lately, Anna realizes that these hallucinations must stop, so she pours out her entire collection of alcohol. She understands how Neil has dealt with his losses by making womb broadcasting his hobby. So she has to find a hobby, too. She starts painting to distract herself from her daughter's nostalgia. Days go by and she begins a new life until one night somewhere in the distance, a wild dog finds Lisa's dead body in the woods. This finally confirms that Anna was not hallucinating after all. That same night, the police discover the body and arrest Anna, as the murder weapon was found to be her paintbrush. The police suspect that Anna killed Neil's friend out of jealousy, which seems to make sense. Anna is stunned by this, but she has no way of confirming her innocence. Fortunately, the very next day, her best friend Slan comes to the rescue and bails her out. Anna returns home and later that night she hallucinates again. She sees blood touching her attic and immediately suspects that it belongs to Lisa. She panics and calls her ex-husband, psychiatrist Douglas. Anna tells him about the blood, about the fact that she might actually have been responsible for Lisa's murder. Despite the fact that they have been divorced for years, Douglas calms his ex-wife down and urges her to go up to the attic and face her fears. Anna hesitates at first, but under great pressure she agrees. She slowly makes her way to the attic and to her relief discovers that the red substance is only paint. However, she also discovers that someone has been living in her attic for some time. It turns out to be Buell the handyman. I knew he didn't have a real job. After a while, she calls Douglas again and explains everything to him. The latter explains that Buell was his first mental patient. He had been in jail because he had brutalized his entire family. After numerous tests, he was declared insane, but Douglas helped rehabilitate him, and a few months later he was eventually released. Douglas also motivated him to work just so he became a jack of all trades. Hearing all this, Anna suspects that the psychopath has beaten and returned, and is now killing people one by one. Oh miracle, she spots Buell walking toward Neil's house with a hammer in the pouring rain. Frightened that the murderer might kill Neil and Emma, she runs outside, despite her phobia of rain. Halfway out, however, Anna's fear takes over, and she falls to the ground. But just as she is about to give up, she finds herself mentally teleported to a prison cell moments before her daughter Elizabeth was murdered by Mike in a massacre. She also recalls how no one came to her little girl's aid. After all these memories, Anna becomes motivated and refuses to let another little girl be murdered by a crazy, serial killer. So she slowly drags herself to Emma's house and makes her way inside. What she sees there, however, shocks her to the core. Anna finds the mortally wounded Buell lying at the entrance. 
She quickly runs up to him, and the dying Buell tells her that he was only trying to return a parcel that Anna accidentally got. Soon he passes away, and Anna feels terrible for even thinking that Buell was the culprit when he made so much effort to change. Anna is a professional when it comes to gaslighting. Just then she hears a sweet Emma from the living room. Thinking Neil is a serial killer Anna rushes out to rescue the little girl, but to her shock she finds Neil lying dead on the couch. In doing so, Anna finally realizes that neither Neil nor Buell was behind Lisa's killer. The perpetrator, it turns out, is Emma, who appears from behind with a bloody knife in her hand and an evil smirk on her face. Emma says that people always underestimate children and what they are capable of. A stunned Lisa asks Emma why she killed Lisa and how is she a typical villain. The little girl goes on to confess her crimes. Flashback then reveals that before Lisa was about to leave for the airport, Emma asked her to buy some candy bars from her. However, fitness enthusiast Lisa refuses to do so and gives the little girl a lecture on health, telling her that chocolate is the worst thing she could possibly add to her body. This infuriated Emma, so she goes up to Lisa with a knife and tells her that chocolate is not the worst thing to put in her body, before plunging the knife into Lisa's neck. That's actually pretty clever. Anna is puzzled, since Neil was also present at home during Lisa's murder, but he didn't hear anything. Emma explains that Neil was upstairs in the bathroom with the water on because he was practicing his womb broadcaster act and didn't want anyone to hear him. She also tells us that she killed her father because Neil forced her to watch his horrible broadcaster's womb act. Horrified by her cruelty, Anna calls her a monster. But Emma quickly parries that the monster was her mother. The vile woman became pregnant, which was completely against Emma's wishes, since she wanted all the attention and to finish off her mother her little brother. Emma spent the entire summer knocking out the wooden dock platform. On the last day of her vacation, she replaced her mother on the flimsy platform. According to the plan, the poor woman fell into the water, but the conniving Emma just let her drown like a psychopath. Now Emma plans to kill Anna and pin all the murders on her. She intends to play the victim and claim that she killed Anna in self-defense. Emma says that Anna is the perfect scapegoat, because she can easily be branded as a mentally ill alcoholic from the other side of the street. It also turns out that Emma stole Anna's scumbag knife when she went to her house to sell Girl Scout cookies. Anna is stunned by the little girl's elaborate plan and calls her crazy. However, this only infuriates Emma, who tells her that her teacher also called her crazy until he pushed her off the lighthouse to her death. Having said this, she attacks Anna with a knife and even manages to stab her in the stomach. Fortunately, Anna manages to fight back, and a long struggle ensues. In the process, the house is destroyed. Anna looks for Neil's gun, but Emma finds it first, shooting her in the shoulder. An enraged Anna calls her a bitch and lunges at her successfully, knocking the gun out of her hand. However, the psychotic girl manages to dominate the data again, smashing the plate in her head, seemingly incapacitating her. Meanwhile, Douglas leaves for Anna's house, fearing for her well-being, as he has been unable to reach her after she found Buell living in her attic. Elsewhere, Emma calls 911 telling the operator that she killed her crazy neighbor in self-defense and the latter killed her father. But just then, Emma starts moving again, proving that she is still alive. An enraged Emma quickly hangs up and pulls out a knife to finish off Anna once and for all. She sits on top of her victim, about to deliver one last blow, but she picks up a shard, plates and plunges the knife into her heart, finally killing her. Douglas arrives just in time to see Anna stabbing the little girl in self-defense. He then rushes to Anya and asks her to stay with him, taking away that everything will be okay. It won't be okay at all. She looks crazy. A few weeks after the incident, Anna is declared innocent because of Douglas's testimony in her favor and a lot of evidence against Emma. Fast forward a year, and we are reunited with Anna as she boards a plane to New York and our character happily orders a glass of vodka. Next to her in the second seat sits a mysterious woman who informs Anna that she is on her way to New York on unspecified business. However, after she awakens from a brief dream, she finds a stranger dead in the plane's bathroom. She immediately alerts the staff, but to her horror they mention that no passengers have been assigned to seat 2. Moreover, they also report that no corpse or any sign of a crime was found in the bathroom. The story ends with us left to wonder. Is this another one of her hallucinations or has she simply witnessed another real murder?